example, iPhone 14 Pro Max versus Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, two of the current best phones in the market for 2023. But there could only be one champion. Could it be Team Apple or could it be Team Orange? I mean, Team Samsung. Tara, alamin natin. So hi guys, I'm Paul Sirich from the Gadget Psychic and welcome back to my channel. So I have here two of the current best phones in the market right now. So I have the Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max and I also have the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Both of them are really good devices. Pero isa sa kanila should stand out over the other. In this video, pag-usapan natin no, kung sino nga ba talaga mas stand out among these two phones. Pag-usapan natin ang kanyang design, kanyang gaming, and of course, ang kanyang camera which is probably the most important dito sa usapan na ito. So si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, it has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the latest from Qualcomm, and this one, si Apple, it has the A16 chip ni Apple. So right now, sabay natin sila i-boot up, no? So pareho sila naka-off. So in 3, 2, 1, let's go. Yan. So halos sabay lang sila, no? Yan natin kung sino ang uh, pumasok sa kanilang home screen. Ayun, nauna si Apple. Nahuli lang ng kunti si Android. Okay, so ito ang home screen ng both phones. So we can see that si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, medyo mas square ang kanyang edges. So kita natin, it's more of a rectangle shape as compared sa iPhone 14 Pro Max na curved ang kanyang edges. So on the sides, itong Apple, it has a flat na stainless steel. Meanwhile, si Samsung it has a, a little bit more curvy na aluminum metal na frame. So si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is being protected by the Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2. You know, ito, iPhone 14 Pro Max is being protected by the ceramic shield glass. Sa likod nito is Corning Gorilla Glass grade na glass. Meanwhile, itong kay Samsung, yung likod niya is also a Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2. So in terms of weight, si Samsung is a little bit lighter compared kay iPhone. Si iPhone having 240 grams, si Samsung having 234 grams. Both of them are IP68 dust and water resistant, but si iPhone, it claims to have a 6 meter dip for 30 minutes. Ito naman si Samsung can withstand 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. So medyo lamang lang kunti si Samsung in terms of this one, si S Pen, which is not available sa iPhone. So ang advantage nito is that you can, well, Take note anytime you want. Just pop this out and doodle. Okay, so yeah, slightly advantages ito kay Samsung. Pero ako, I'm not really too much of a pen user, but it's nice to have. Now in terms of display, both of this phone has almost the same size. Now ito si iPhone 14 Pro Max. It has a 6.7 inch na LTPO Super Retina XDR OLED. 120Hz of screen refresh rate, meron din siyang HDR10, then Dolby Vision din siya. Maximum brightness is 2,000 nits. Ito naman, meanwhile, si Samsung, it has a 6.8 inch, mas malaki siya ng 0.1, and dynamic AMOLED ang display niya, 120Hz of screen refresh rate, the same HDR10+, plus. then of course, ang kanyang maximum brightness is 1,750 nits. So, medyo lamang ng konti si iPhone, kasi mas brighter siya by 250 nits. But mapapansin mo lang siguro siya under the bright sunlight. But both, oh, both of them, nilabas ko naman siya, tinay ko under the bright sunlight. Minax out ko naman both phones. Parehong walang problema, no? Nakikita ko pa even you watch video, walang problema. So right now, we're watching a movie trailer. So I can say na not far from each other. Pero what I can say na yung ang display ni iPhone 14 Pro Max seems to be a little bit better compared dito kay Samsung. Siguro yung kanyang uh, retina display probably gives you a little bit more punchier colors. Pag tinitingnan mo dito, ah, straight. And I can say na both are good. Display niya parehong maganda. Probably ang um, hindi ko lang gusto kay Apple is dito, yung kanyang dynamic island, which for me, ah, uh, dyan lumalamang dito si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Punch hole lang siya maliit. This one, medyo it takes a lot of space. But in in terms of display, I would probably give it to iPhone 14 Pro Max. 
Now, in terms of watching both of this video in 2K display, I can say na probably Apple gave it a little bit more definition in terms of yung mga nakita kong details ha, pagdating dito. No? Kita natin in some aspect, parang mas marami details ang pinapakita tong si iPhone 14 Pro Max. But in terms of uh, yung display size, no? probably for me talaga winner si Samsung pagdating sa display. Pagdating naman sa edge-to-edge -edge display, I can say I would really give it to Samsung for that. Kasi parang mas full ang view ko dito sa Samsung. Pero pagdating sa rendering ng mga videos, I could say na mas maganda. Mas candy to the eye itong nakita ko kay iPhone 14 Pro Max. So guys, right now, panorin lang natin two quick videos dito sa both phones. It's both a YouTube shorts. Papakinggan lang natin ang kanyang sounds, no? Who sounds louder on both of their loudspeakers? Dito naman sa bala. So based on my observation, both of them has almost the same loudspeaker. Ang lakas ng sound sila can uh, based sa same distance ko ah, dito where I'm sitting towards these two phone, almost the same ang loudest set of both phones. So both are good in terms of watching videos, listening to music on Spotify, or just browsing on TikTok, or even just playing games. Now, looking at both of their benchmark score, this is what I got on both devices. So, namang lang konti, si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra by, ang nakuha niya, no, is 1.18 million points. Dito is 943,000 points from the A16 chip ni Apple. Dito naman sa 3D Mark na test sa wildlife, medyo lamang pa rin ng konti si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, browsing on both phones, pareho naman siyang smooth, no? I don't see any lags naman on both phones. Definitely kasi, flagship naman sila, 120Hz naman ang screen refresh rate. So, there shouldn't be any problem browsing on both phones. Ito naman itsura when you're browsing on the iPhone 14 Pro Max sa TikTok and sa Samsung. So, both, well, smooth as expected. Pagdating naman sa gameplay, both phones, I can say really nice naman pagdating sa, ano no, dito sa Tower of Fantasy. And I can say na, well, halos wala naman na-feel naman na lag, except naman dito kay Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Uh, pag medyo tumatagal ka, no, mapapansin mo there's a little bit of lag. Uh, pero very minimal lang naman. For more details and gameplay sa Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, check it out on my full review ng Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra here. Click nyo lang yung link na ito. So try naman natin mag-gaming dito sa iPhone 14 Pro Max. But before that, let me try this one on. Itong Razer na phone cooler chroma na nakuha natin no, for iPhone. So there's two kinds of this one. So there's one for Android and another one for iPhone. So ang advantage nito na meron nila for iPhone is ano siya na magsave. So, all you need to do is just clip it at the back of your phone and you're ready to game. Unlike sa mga Android, you need to clip it kasi wala sila magsay. Now, this is how it looks like. Really looks cool. Okay, so all you need to do is just peel this one off. Okay. Ayan. Then, ididikit na sa likod ng iyong phone. So, this one is basically USB Type-C powered. And this one comes with the A to C cable from Razer, and it also comes along with a user guide. So try natin, no? So once we kinabit na natin ng power, you can switch it on here. So this is how it looks like. Sa likod ang ganda niya, no? So there's RGB lights here, and wind is blowing here. Sa dito sa direction nito, dito intake niya, dito exhaust niya, and the chroma really looks nice. Talagang ganda ng gawa ni Razer, no? And yung likod niya is beginning to freeze. Ang lamig na dito pag hinawakan mo. Yan. Okay? So, yan. Kita natin na nafrost na siya. So, mabilis na siya ikabit dito sa likod ng iPhone, no? Yan. Dito mo na ilalagay, no? So, halos di mo na siya matatanggal. Yan. No? Ganda dito sa, ano, no? Sa iPhone. Mag-save. 
sobrang kapit ng ganyan magnet. No? So, ganang, ganang kaganda. Which, on the opposing side, sa Android, I wish na pwede nang gumana din sa Android. No? This one is also wireless charging capable, si Samsung Galaxy S30 Ultra. Well, kumakapit naman siya, pero eventually, malalaglag din siya pag, ano, no? pag katagalan. No? So, hindi siya ganun kakapit. And you have another option na mabibili no? from uh, Razer, which is for Android. So, yeah, this one is also ma- only made for iPhone. So, let's just simply try it out. Ganito lang siya, no? So, let's, let's... So, let's also play a quick game ng Tower Fantasy. So, while loading, this is how it looks like. This is sa likod niya, no? It looks really cool. Itong Razer Chroma. And I like it. It really cools down your phone by around mga 5 degrees Celsius, no? So, giving your phone... Really yung, ano, no, if you're playing for long hours, it's iPhone 14 Pro Max or any iPhone na may wireless charging. This one is a very perfect device companion to go together with your gaming needs. So, para todo lamig ang yung phone while you're playing the game for more than 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hours. Kung sino malama kung saan yung pwede mabili, link on the description. And what's and what's nice dito sa Razer Phone Cooler Chroma, pwede rin siya mag-act as a stand. Tira na guys, oh. Nakatay na ang aking phone. So, habang pinapalamig mo, pwede ka manood. Or just, well, <laughs> make it a phone stand. Medyo mahal na phone stand. So, kita natin ang gameplay dito sa iPhone 14 Pro Max. It seems to me it's a little bit more smoother as compared kay Samsung. No? And yung gameplay was really smooth. Naka, even naka-highest graphical settings. And I don't expect the same things against Shin Impact, no? Na ang gaming niya would also be very smooth. So guys, kung gusto niyo makita more gaming performance, uh, you can also check my full review nito iPhone 14 Pro Max. Link up there. So guys, after playing nito ng game nito, no? So iPhone 14 Pro Max, medyo may pagkamainit dito sa likod when you're playing long games, lalo mga against Shin Impact and Tower Fantasy. But after replacing itong Razer Cooler na Chroma, itong likod niya, no, was definitely a lot cooler. So, based on what I tested, it has dropped around mga 5 degrees Celsius, which is pretty not bad. If you want to use itong Razer Chroma na may case sa likod, you should buy mga MagSafe na case, no? So, para magamit mo itong cooler na nakamagnet pa rin with yung case mo. But, of course, best effect is definitely pag nakakabit siya dito sa likod ng iyong phone. So right now guys, pag-usapan naman natin ang battery nito ng both devices. So ang battery size nila is not exactly the same. Si iPhone having 4,000 mAh of battery. Si Samsung having 5,000 mAh of battery. And of course, pagdating naman sa charging, PD 2.0 support ni uh, Apple. While si Samsung supports a PD 3.0, 45 watts na fast charging si iPhone supporting 20 watts. So, pagdating sa wireless, almost the same naman sila, no? 15 watts na MagSafe charging. And dito naman sa kabila, it supports Qi charging of 15, uh, 15 watts na wireless charging. Pero lamang lang kunti, si Samsung, it has a 4.5 watts of reverse wireless charging, which can give you a uh, chance to charge other phones in case of emergency, or you can charge yung mga TWS nyo na may wireless charging capability. Now, both phones, I can say, makuna naman kami battery. And pag sinabayan ko sila ginamit, no, on a day-to-day basis, on normal usage, ha? like, of course, using for social media, watching videos, taking some calls, uh, doing some chats on WeChat, scrolling the social media. At the end of the day, I can say na mas lamang kunti si iPhone dahil mas marami parang kunti ang battery nito as opposed kay Samsung. So let's just say I start the day at 8 and end it at 6 with almost the same task, almost. Si iPhone, it still gives me around mga 35% battery. Si Samsung, roughly mga nasa 28. So medyo mas lamang ng konti si iPhone pagdating sa battery efficiency based on my personal observation. Okay, right now we're going to my favorite topic, ang camera. So both of this phone has massive camera. Si iPhone, it has triple camera setup dito sa ligod. So it has a 48MP. Finally, no, na 48 na rin si Apple. It has the 48MP na aperture 1.8 na wide sensor. So may OIS to. It comes together with a 12MP na telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom and a 12MP na ultra-wide lens. 
And meron din siya TOF 3D LiDAR scanner para sa depth sensor. And itong, and itong sa Apple, it also has a dual LED flash together. Ang maximum recording capability niya can record up to 4K 60fps. And dito sa harap niya, ang kanyang Dynamic Island hides the 12MP aperture 1.9 na front-facing camera. It can record up to 4K and 60fps. What's nice dito sa kanyang camera, it has gyro EIS para mas stable when you're taking selfie videos. Samantala dito kay Samsung, it has quad camera setup. Okay, so 200MP ang kanyang main sensor with an aperture 1.7 to OIS. 10MP ang kanyang periscope telephoto lens with 10 times optical zoom. So, doon palang lamang na lamang siya kay Apple. No? So, si Apple up to 3 times. Then, of course, meron sa 10MP na telephoto lens with 3 times optical zoom. Then, of course, there's the 12MP na ultra-wide sensor with super steady video. Okay? So, sa likod, meron siya isang LED flash and it can record up to 8K and 30fps. Yung kanyang camera sa harap, it can record up to... Eh, ang kanyang camera sa harap, it has a 12MP na aperture 2.2 na sensor. Then, it can record up to 4K and 60fps. Tingnan natin mga pictures na nakuha natin no, side by side. Taking this one outdoors, nakita natin itong arc na ito, no? This is the old Chinatown arc. And what I can see... Pag tinignan nyo, no, medyo mas madilim tong photo from the iPhone. But if you look at it clearer, medyo mas detailed na no, pagkakuha niya dito overall sa picture pagdating sa sun and of course sa clouds. If you zoom in dito sa clouds, kita nyo may definition pa yung cloud. But if you zoom in dito sa Samsung, there's no more definition na cloud. But if you zoom in dito sa letra ng arc, well, I can see na mas, mas maganda kunti kay Samsung, mas brighter. But dito sa iPhone, it still retains yung kanyang details. So, kunting retouch lang to, it would be okay. But overall, mas warmer kunti ang pictures ni Apple as opposed kay Samsung. So, right now, tinan naman natin yung picture na ito. You can see na both of these shots, kanya-kanya, no? So, si Samsung medyo mas saturated, mas maganda ka ng color. But si Apple, mas natural, but mas retain ang definition, no? And mga details na itong bulak lang. No? If you zoom it clearly, kita mo yung definition niya. But if you zoom it dito, well, meron pa rin, but of course, not as good as that one na nakuha natin dito sa iPhone 14 Pro Max. So, pagdating sa, defin sa details, I think mas maganda ang pag-preserve ng details no, ng iPhones. Now, if we compare dito sa ultra-wide lens naman niya, we can see na parang iba ang shots nila, no, both. So, we can see na medyo gloomy ang weather. And mas napakita ni iPhone na medyo mas gloomy ang weather with this one. Okay? So, yung, yung cloud definition na dito uh, is definitely a little bit more gloomier compared to this one. Si Samsung, medyo talaga mas, ano na, mas pinipilit niya, isaturate kunti ang colors, even though na medyo gloomy na, ginagawa pa rin a little bit bluer. At tinan natin yung sa, ano, no, sa building. We zoom it kita natin na, na yung blue neto is much pleasing sa eyes as compared to this one. Ito yung mas natural color niya. So, in terms of ultra-wide lens, I, I think maganda namang capture ni Samsung dito sa picture na ito. But overall, if you ask me kung sino mas natural, I'll definitely go for the one sa iPhone. So, pagdating naman sa normal shot, we can see dalagang ano, no, mas saturated kunti dalaga dito kay Samsung. So, using both telephoto lens up to 3 times zoom, well, masasabi ko dito sa inyo na pagdating sa building, mas saturated nga talaga kay Samsung, mas colorful. Now, gusto natin i-focus a little bit more deeper dito sa mga leaves. No? So, let's just say dito. Okay? So, we can see dito kay Apple, mas na-preserve niya ang mga details. Okay? So, mas... Maganda ang details pagdating dito kay Apple na iPhone 14 Pro Max pagdating sa mga dahon na sa mga puno. So, definitely, I'll give it to Apple for this one. So, let's go indoors sa low light. So, we can see naman dito uh, on this photo na captured at the same time. So, we can see na medyo mas preserve yung details ni ano, no, si Samsung naman dito. So, dito, si iPhone, medyo nag-focus siya sa face. So, probably dahil sa face detection niya. As opposed naman dito kay Samsung, medyo clear pa rin ang kanyang kamay dito. No? 
But pagdating naman dito sa bin- ano niya, sa hawak niya, it's, hindi, hindi na nakafocus dito. So basically si Samsung, na-focus niya on both sa mukha and na-focus pa ni Samsung dito sa kamay. Whereas opposed dito kay iPhone, hindi na niya na-focus. No? So I think on these photos, dito sa low light na ito, parang mas maganda yung kuha ni iPhone. Eh, now, pagdating naman dito sa shot na ito, I think mas maganda yung kuha dito sa Samsung. Now, taking this quick food shot, well, I can see na definitely mas yummier tingnan ito kay Samsung. This one kay iPhone, this is definitely much natural color. Now, if you zoom it in, kasi ano ito eh, low light, okay? So, I can see na parang medyo mas may kunting definition pa si Samsung. Pagdating sa low light, ha? Now, pagdating naman dito sa shot na ito, I think yung kay iPhone captured it a little bit better as opposed dito kay Samsung. Dahil siguro yung definition niya, the way it was poured down, parang mas maganda, mas evident dito kay iPhone. In terms of details, ah, well, pagdating naman sa food chat, I wouldn't really deny na mas maganda makakuha ni Samsung. Definitely, mas masarap tingnan, mas masarap kainin itong mga pictures na nakuha ni Samsung. Tinan naman natin itong photo na ito. No? So, after we capture this photo, makita natin na yung cloud is a lot more clearer dito sa iPhone. Dito sa Samsung, medyo mas gloomier siya ng konti. Pero si Samsung, medyo mas ini-enhance yung mga colors na dito. So, as we can see dito sa building, if you zoom it all the way, yung glass niya, no? mas bluer ang capture ni Samsung. Medyo mas original, ano, no? natural color ang kuha ni iPhone. But, pagdating naman sa details, I can say na parang mas maliwanag ang mga capture ni Samsung this time. Now, with that said, I believe na si iPhone performs a lot better in terms of outdoors. Si Samsung seems to thrive a little bit more when it comes to low-light shots. Now, itong dalawang selfie is taking outdoors. So, I can see na parang mas maganda yung tingnan yung kay, kay Samsung. No? Mas very, mas saturated ng konti. Mas maganda siya i-post pagdating sa IG. No? But in terms of details, I think ah, mas marami details na capture itong sa iPhone. If, if, if you look it closely dito sa photo, yeah, si iPhone has captured more details, but si Samsung it has enhanced it a little bit more para mas maganda i-post pagdating sa social media. Now, pagdating naman sa picture nito, indoor low light, well, definitely, I would say na mas maganda kuha ni iPhone in terms of details. Ito kay Samsung, medyo mas kita natin na mas pino ng konti and mas a little bit more filtered in terms of uh, pagdating sa ganda na mag-post sa Instagram. Itong kay Apple, I think, would definitely get more likes as compared to this one. Now, pagdating naman dito sa art, dito sa gabi, I can say na, now I can say na both phone can capture it on its own uh, details. Si iPhone has made it a little bit warmer. Pero pagdating sa background, no, dalagang totally dark siya. Pero ito kay Samsung, makita mo, medyo mas ini-enhance na konti ang ano no ang sky to make it a little bit more clearer as opposed dito kay iPhone but mas realistic lang talaga tong kuha ni iPhone slight the advantages din dito si Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra dahil kaya niya kumuha ng moonshot up to 100 times zoom which hindi kaya ni iPhone up to 15 times zoom wala ka makukuha ng moon okay so taking both of this video using the front facing camera i can say na yeah, mas maganda nga talaga kuha ni iPhone even though that they are both 12 MP but in terms of capturing more details I think mas maganda talaga ang kuha ni iPhone Now in terms of this one uh, pagdating sa details na dalagang makita mo yung sahig niya mas kita yung mga imperfection ng road as compared dito sa Samsung pero mag, parang medyo retouch na siya konti So both are very stable. I'm just using my bare hands. But definitely, if you want more details and more natural, I think the iPhone has taken I think the iPhone has taken it a lot better than the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. So guys, nakita na natin everything na gusto natin malaman on both of these phones. So napag-usapan na natin ang kanyang display, napag-usapan na natin ang kanyang design, and of course, ang kanyang battery life. Plus, of course, gaming and camera performance. Sino napili ninyo? Ako, ako personally, I would go away with the Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max. Simply for the reason na mas user-friendly ang Apple. Yung kanyang camera is definitely outstanding. 
Hindi ko naman sinabi na pangit si Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, no? but definitely must stand out ang mga photos sa na nakuha ni Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, in terms of battery life, mas lamang siya ng konti kasi mas tumagal siya ng konti sa akin as compared dito sa phone na ito. And plus yung form factor, pag nilabas mo ang phone na ito, no? plus pag nilabas mo ang iPhone, iba pa rin ang feeling ng iPhone. No? It feels a little bit more premium. But this phone definitely is a little bit heavier. But the logo dito na Apple dito sa likod does give you a little bit more premium over this one kay Samsung. So ito iPhone 14 Pro Max ko has a storage of 6, 512. And itong Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. 89,990. This one is 93,990. So if you want to know kung saan yung pwede mabili, I'll be posting the link on the description box below. This one, you can get it from Beyond the Box. And this one, you can get it from Samsung Official. So guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, click that bell icon para hindi nyo mamiss mga future uploads ko like this one here on my channel. So ako pala si Richmond and you're watching Gadget Psychic. What's up?